There we go. So I'm still Karen Mills, and I still have the pleasure of being your service leader along with Gordon Ritchie and co-choir director along with Gordon Ritchie of our resplendent looking Coriolis today. <laughs> thanks, thanks to the sewing talents of Yvonne Miro and a few other elves, we have these lovely new stoles that we uh, introduced last year, so it's great to be able to wear them. I'd like to welcome those of you in the sanctuary this morning, those of you online, uh, and those of you who are watching at a future date. We are, uh, as Unitarian Universalists, bound together not by a common set of beliefs, but by a promise to support one another in our individual searches for truth and meaning, guided by our principles and drawing from our many sources. I do hope that you feel welcome here today and whoever you love, however you understand family, whatever your age, race, or ability, you are welcome here. We invite you to join us in a journey of free thought, spiritual questing, and justice making. And we extend a special welcome to visitors, those we haven't seen for a while. It's lovely to see some faces again this morning. And please join us after the service for some more coffee and conversation. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous peoples and Inuit, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, and many others whose history and languages and cultures continue to influence and add to our vibrant community. We have a lot of text to share with you this morning and some beautiful music. And so I would ask that you quiet anything that hums or beeps or rings or dings or otherwise might distract you or your neighbor from this morning's service. We hope that you find something in the service today that nourishes your spirit and helps you keep and find your balance through the week. And I am going to now invite a couple people up because we have some announcements. So I know that Lynn has one and I know that Marilyn has one. Good morning, I'm Lynn Turvey. I'm a member of the Human Resources Committee. The board has asked the HR committee to explore the possibility of hiring another part-time staff member. So we've put together a very short survey asking for your feedback. There are a number of options and ideas on the list, but of course we are constrained by budget considerations, so we have to look very carefully at what might best suit our needs at this time. Janet emailed the survey out on this past Tuesday, and we've had quite a good response, so I thank those people who have done so. If you haven't, there's still time. Uh, you could go back to the Tuesday email or uh, find the link in the December newsletter. And alternatively, I have some paper copies out on the front desk if you prefer to fill something out of that nature. We will talk more about this, um, possibly after a church service uh, in January. So, thank you. Hello, my name is Marilyn Gay. My pronouns are she, her, if anyone's interested. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm here to tell you about our annual recognition of Amnesty International uh, Right for Rights campaign. Like many of you have participated over the years, I see lots of uh, good writers and good, good supporters of this campaign. Um, this is an, uh, an international worldwide campaign that um, brings focal attention to particular cases of injustice, prisoners of conscience, environmental issues, um, and we will provide for you uh, folders with outlines of the particular cases with all of the information you need to write, uh, write a letter and send. I wanted to tell you uh, about I'll put this brochure 
on the welcome desk later. This is one that I recently received from Amnesty International. The two women in picture were organizers of a peaceful protest in Zimbabwe. They were abducted, beaten, and left for dead. But when they were discovered and rescued and hospitalized, they were charged with trumped up crimes by the Zimbabwe government. Amnesty International focused on these two women last year in their Right for Rights campaign. They were acquitted of all charges and released because the leaders in Zimbabwe received 500,000 letters calling for their release and for justice. This is a very powerful campaign and you can take part next week after church. Thank you for that. We're going to begin our service with a prelude. Living in the darkness brings a different 
I'd like to invite Yvonne, Robert, and Jan forward for our next readings, please. And I'd also like to invite Gordon to be our chalice lighter and advent candle lighter. A Chalice Lighting Reading, In This Spirit of Searching, by Reverend Joan Javier Duval. Out of the depths unknown, the spark of light ignites, and we are born. We enter a world, a universe not of our making. Our lives unfold in mystery and wonder. Questions abound for which there are no definite answers. And so we gather in community to seek in one another assurance and recognition, compassion and strength. We gather in community to be reminded of what is most ultimate, most sacred. In this spirit of searching and reverence, let us worship this morning together. May we light this chalice this morning to remind us of the power and the beauty of balance and contrast. It is darkness that can make the flame of a single candle so powerful and light that deepens those shadows in turn. A chalice, uh, This liturgy for the lighting of the Advent calendars was written by our own Reverend Rosemary Morrison. The placing of candles upon a circle of evergreens is an age old tradition. Lighting additional candles each day or week as the light wanes has been part of human rituals for centuries upon centuries. We are warmed by the glow we are, we are reminded that the wheel of the season will turn and brilliant lengthening days will return. The original Advent wreath in the Christian tradition dates back to the 16th century and included a candle for each of the 24 days leading up to Christmas. For us here in this time, the circle of evergreens reminds us that life and love will never end. We light candles each week with anticipation as we know a new season will soon be here. Days will become longer and we know the warmth of the candles will soon be replaced by the warmth of the sun. The first Advent candle is the candle of hope. Hope is the mot motivating force that moves us through times of despair. The days are getting shorter, the weather colder and the nights longer. Hope tells us that longer days are ahead, that new life will emerge, and that we need to hold on just a little longer. With hope 
we begin our journey toward the sun and the new light it begins. We light the candle. Now I invite Alec forward for our first full reading of the service. Solstice by Gary Kowalski. Night has its own kind of beauty, different than the beauty of day. Night is a time of sleep, and dreams and inward visions. A time of pause within activity. Darkness is an invitation to imagining and storytelling and to using ears instead of eyes to listen to the world in its stillness. Darkness is the den of a life in germination and darkness is the portal of death that opens to eternity the mystery of all time past and endless time to come. At the center of our being, there is light and there is darkness, the known and the unknown, the named and the nameless, the finite and the infinite. Light and dark are different, but not opposed to each other. Like a mother and father, they are friends with one another and with us. Thank you. As we head into a season of giving and generosity, it's time to celebrate our generosity with a time of sharing our abundance. And I would invite the ushers to take our collection as I am talking. Um, half of our unidentified contributions each week and each month are contributed to a charity outside of our doors, knowing that there are many, many in our community who could benefit from 
our generosity. And so this month, though, is a little bit different. The collection this month um, is being uh, donated to the minister's discretionary fund. And that is a monies for Reverend Rosemary to use when she encounters people who are going through a tough time, who come for support and could use not only spiritual support, but a little financial support as well. And, uh, and so that is uh, what our unidentified contributions are going to. Ushers, go ahead. Um, as we collect, you'll also notice that there may be some people who don't donate, and that's just fine, because a lot of people in our congregation uh, give monthly via e-transfer or by auto deposit from their banks. And um, all is welcome and all is appreciated. Thank you for your generosity as the offerings brought forward. Please join me in singing from you, I receive. <laughs> your turn to sing. Um, our hymn is number 55, Dark of Winter. And because it's such a cozy, warm, cuddle in kind of song, I'd invite you to remain seated. And the words will appear, have appeared on the screen for you. Yeah. Can we have the lights back down again, please? invite Elora for our next reading. Winter's Wisdom by Jeanne McKay. 
Putting a positive spin on winter in Michigan is a bit of a hard sell. Our winters can be bleak, what with the gray skies and long nights, a little like Edmonton. And I've got the audacity to suggest that you greet winter by slowing down and engaging in solitary reflection at what is arguably the busiest time of the year. What was I thinking? Well, it's all about choice and attention. The choice to shift our attention in the midst of frenetic activity could bring magical moments of connection to winter's essence. In the natural world, life moves in cycles. There are cycles of seasons, of a day, a relationship, a life. I'm gonna wait until that ringing is done. There we go. There are times when energy is on the rise and times when it is falling. As you have undoubtedly noticed, we are experiencing a descent. The Earth's energy is moving downward and inward. Darkness falls by dinner time. Not much is growing. The trees have dropped their leaves. If we didn't know better, we would think that they're dying and our bodies respond with fear at some cellular level. Despite our civilized surroundings, we retain the knowledge that we could die out there in the cold. But the trees are not dying. They are shedding what they no longer need and pulling vital energy down into their trunks and roots. Life is held internally and underground. Plants rest in winter, gathering potency so they can burst forth when the time is right. The cold and dark allow them to gather power for an energetic start in spring. In the five elements system of traditional Chinese medicine, winter is a time of deep listening to ourselves, to spirit, to silence. Winter is a great time to allow ourselves to dream without committing to action, to simply take pleasure in visions of what might be. It is a time of inquiry and uncertainty, which may evoke doubts and hard questions. Am I living the life I want to live? Or am I playing to the crowd, trying to look good? Hopefully we can learn, as Rainer Maria Rilke wrote in his letters to a young poet, to Be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. It is easier to see the essence of things in this season. The trees are no longer shielded by their leaves, so we can see their fundamental structure. It may be a time when we can see our own true nature more clearly. That feels true to me on a personal level. Now, in the winter of my life, I find opportunities to live more authentically. The lessons are not always gentle ones, but they can offer greater freedom. So how does this honoring of the season fit with modern culture? Truth be told, it doesn't really. The period between Thanksgiving and New Year's is notoriously overscheduled between socializing, shopping, family, and work. We expect ourselves to go full tilt 24-7, 365. And yet, nature reminds us of ebb and flow. What is full will one day be empty. Each of us must face times of darkness and not knowing. Approaching winter in a more balanced, harmonious way could start with a shift in attention, even for just a moment. Pause to appreciate the silhouette of bare trees against the setting sun or the honk of wild geese overhead. Stay warm. Spend time in silence. Take a walk that's more about experience than exercise. Watch an entire sunset or sunrise. Sit in nature and watch wildlife. Take a long soaking bath. Watch and listen to water. Look at the stars. Sleep when you are tired. No matter where we come from, it is likely that our ancestors gathered around a fire and told stories. We can draw on their wisdom, even if the fire is a flickering candle. 
There's a reason so many religious traditions in this season celebrate images of light in the midst of darkness. As we descend into the sacred dark, I wish you strong dreams and deep peace. May each of us find times of solitude, rest, and contemplation. May we discover ways to explore the fertile darkness and make friends with silence, knowing that a good winter means a strong spring. Imagine how much force it takes for a seed to break out of its casing and push through the soil to reach the sun. If we truly allow ourselves to restore and replenish ourselves in winter, we will have the strength to burst forth in the spring with restored energy, clear vision, and a sense of purpose. So may it be. talking about the mystery of silence and darkness this morning. Silence and darkness are mysterious. Both can plunge us into despair, yet both can pull us out of it too. Both bring a sense of anticipation, a what's next kind of feeling. 
both slow us down and force us to be more aware of our surroundings. Silence can amplify our fears and our feelings of loneliness. And darkness can make us unsure of our own paths. But silence can also strip away all that external racket to allow us to hear the true desires of our heart. Silence allows us to be with our thoughts, consider complex ideas, and discover what we truly think. In the same vein, darkness removes all the shiny distractions that clutter our days, lets us see the world and our place in it in a very different way. So what is it that makes silence sacred rather than suffocating? What makes darkness magical instead of miserable? I believe it's a sense of connection. Imagine that you're standing in a quiet field looking up at a star-filled night sky. Just like the ones we've had in Edmonton the last couple weeks with that beautiful full moon and the clear, clear winter nights. You may feel small, but if you have a sense of connection with the universe, rather than feeling isolated, you feel wonder at how this vast mix of planets and people exist together and have done so for centuries and that you're a part of it. The sense of mystery is awe-filled. It reminds me of the words of Wendell Berry, an American writer, environmentalist, and farmer. Lots of his works have a strong farming and land-based theme, and they draw on his love of the natural world and his respect for it. And he wrote, we must learn to acknowledge that creation is full of mystery. We will never entirely understand it. We must abandon arrogance and simply stand in awe. We must recover the sense of majesty of creation and the ability to be worshipful in its presence. For I do not doubt that it is only on the condition of humility and reverence before the world that our species will be able to remain in it. When I read this, I was really intrigued by his use of the word and his direction to be worshipful in the presence of creation. And the more I thought about it, the more I found that that really captured for me the sense I get of being so small in part of something so vast. It's humbling, but it's thrilling at the same time. I experience a profound sense of gratitude just to be alive and part of such unimaginable beauty. Barry's calling to be worshipful also reminded me of a reading that's in our hymn book it's by J Jacob Trapp, a UU minister who lived from 1899 to 1993, so fairly contemporary. And he describes worship this way. He says, to worship is to stand in awe under a heaven of stars. To worship is to be silent, receptive, before a tree astir in the wind or the passing shadow of a cloud, to worship is to work with dedication and skill, and it is to pause from work and listen to a strain of music. To worship is to sing with the singing beauty of the earth. It's to listen through a storm to the small voice within. Worship is loneliness seeking communion. It is the thirsty land crying out for rain. Worship is kindred fire within our hearts. It moves through deeds of kindness and through acts of love. And worship is the mystery within us, reaching out to the mystery beyond. For me, that last line, worship is the mystery within us, reaching out to the mystery beyond, solves the mystery of silence and darkness. Those two elements are simply conduits for connection, pathways where mysteries can meet. 
In the past few years, we've all had close encounters with silence and darkness, the metaphorical darkness of the pandemic, our world being turned upside down, and our sense of control totally swept out from under our feet. And then there was the silence. The silence as workplaces closed down, gatherings stopped, and the first few works, weeks were filled with anxiety, uncertainty, and fear. But then the story started to come. The stories of the person who discovered the joy of baking bread and leaving it on the doorsteps of her neighbors. Or the families who rediscovered the fun of sitting around the kitchen table for games night. Of people putting signs of encouragement in their windows to cheer up people walking by. Of those who, being too busy before, suddenly discovered the abundance and beauty of nature all around them. In all of these stories, it was the sense of connection that turned that silence and darkness from oppression to opportunity. But that silence and darkness was needed to shake people out of their everyday routines and slow them down enough to make those connections. In this season of busyness, I think it's especially important to take time to appreciate silence and darkness to listen to our own inner voice, and to connect to those things that are truly important to us. Just like nature needs a period of dormancy before regrowth, we need times of rest and reflection before we can bring our best selves to the world. Let us take time to do deep listening, to pull the vital energy into our trunks. Imagine, sleep, dream, and connect. Amen and blessed be. Please join me now in singing hymn number 246, O Little Town of Bethlehem. For all of us, this time of year, in this place and time, 
We are very aware of the shortening of days, the lengthening of the darkness. And so for me, this is an especially important time to light candles, to have that sense of hope, that visual sign of love, inspiration, comfort. And so at this time in the service, we light candles. And we also at this time acknowledge all the sorrows, the joys, the celebration, the sense of community that we have, that which we need in our lives, and that's that which we wish for others. We know for those around the world who are in need as well. For those of you who are with us online, I invite you to write your thoughts, your prayers, your blessings, your wishes into the chat. For those of you here in the sanctuary, I invite you to come forward to either of the candle stations and light a candle now, if you wish. You would have noticed before we started to light candles that there were some that, are, that were already lit. This is something that I like to do before the service begins. I personally like to take my own little moment in the quiet before the service begins to light a candle. And I'd like to put that offer out for any of you as well before the service begins. I know for me, it's nice to know that I don't have somebody waiting behind me to light a candle, so I can take a little bit more time to really think about the candle that I'm lighting. So before the services begin in the future, consider taking a little bit of private time for yourself to light a candle, or as we just did, light a candle during the service. For all of those who have been with us online, who have been adding their thoughts into the chat. We light one more candle for you 
I'll ask Wendy to light that. May it remind all of us that we are not alone, especially during this time of darkness. May we keep all these wishes, prayers, blessings, concerns, and joys within our hearts as we worship together. May it be so. Blessed be. We invite you into a time of meditation now. This is going to be a guided meditation. And so if it helps you to be in place and imagine, um, I invite you to close your eyes. You may wish to adjust your position so that your spine is straight and supported, your body relaxed, your hands resting gently in your lap. Let us take a few slow, deep breaths together. With vision muted, notice what your other senses are telling you. You may feel a sense of pressure in your back or your sitting bones where your body comes in contact with your chair. You may have feelings of tightness in your shoulders or along your jawline. Release any areas of tension that you notice. Soften your neck and swallowing muscles. Release any tension that you feel in your abdomen, imagining the inner organs in your belly letting go of tension. Soften your eyes. Let them feel warm and relaxed, as if floating in a pool of water. Inhale. Exhale. You may notice strange sensations, such as a tingling in a muscle or a ticklish feeling on the skin. Whatever comes is okay. Just acknowledge it in silence. Let us turn our attentions to the sounds around us. What do you notice? You may hear your own breathing, maybe a growling stomach. You may hear a neighbor shifting position, wind blowing by the outer walls of the building. Having acknowledged these outward sounds, let us now turn our focus inward. Thoughts may float through your consciousness. You can just let them float on by. Feelings may bubble up from a deeper place in you. You don't have to name the feeling or put any words to it. Just notice if there's anything there for you with gentle acceptance. Now imagine your body and mind are filled with darkness and silence, like the deep, dark night in the wilderness. Take comfort in the stillness, in the restfulness of this place and in the space within you. Don't need to try to make anything happen. Just rest in this inner darkness, knowing that you are safe in this moment, you can simply be. Breathe in and breathe out. In the quiet corners within, let us sense the healing powers of the body, the amazing ability of our soft animal body to restore damaged cells to create new healthy cells, to bring balance to systems that have gotten out of whack. Let us acknowledge too the creative powers of our minds and hearts 
from the mysterious inner regions come all poetry, all music. And from the inner dark emerges all sculpture and dance, all the arts and cultures that are the heritages of humanity, even consciousness itself, the great unsolved mystery of science, resides in the deep unknown of ourselves. Continue to be with your breath and a still quiet mood as you rest a while longer in the darkness. With humility and awe and gratitude for all the powers of the darkness within yourself. Words by Gary Kowalski. Maybe prayer doesn't mean talking to God at all. Maybe it just means listening. Unplugging the TV, turning off the computer, quieting the metal chatter and distractions. Maybe it means listening to the birds and the insects the wind and the leaves, the creaking and groaning of the trees, noticing who else is out there, not far away, but nearby, sitting so still we can hear our heartbeat, watch our breath, the gentle whoosh of air, the funny noises from our own insides, marveling at the body we take so much, for granted. Maybe it means listening to our dreams, paying more attention to what we really want from life, and less attention to all the nagging, scolding voices from our past. Or maybe it's all about listening to each other, not thinking ahead to how we can answer or rebut or parry or advise or admonish, but actually being present to each other. Perhaps if we just sit quietly, we'll overhear the peace whispering through the centuries that's missing from the clamor of the moment. Perhaps Prayer means listening to the silences between the words, noticing the negativity of space, the vast, undifferentiated, and nameless wonder that underlies it all. Maybe prayer doesn't mean talking to God at all, but listening with the heart to the angel choirs all around us. Those who have ears, let them hear. Our next piece has a part in it that I'm pretty sure most of you will recognize, and if you would like to join along singing with us, please do. Thank you. 
sang so beautifully I want you to do some more <laughs> we're going to sing next hymn number 246 O little town of Bethlehem oh or 244 it came upon a midnight clear that one's good too <laughs>
Our ending's going to be just a little bit different today. We're going to have closing words that Bonnie's going to read while I extinguish the flames. Uh, we're going to sing a song, and then we have something a little different before we sing Carry the Flame. Embrace the Night by Jennifer Grayson. Universal mystery, guide us away from the desire to shine light in all the corners. Teach us to embrace the night, for without the darkness, we never see the stars. Okay, somebody thinks I need a mic. <laughs> Hello, all you lovely people. We're doing something weird this morning. Bonnie McMillan, <laughs> I'm going to make you cry. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I did hit up a bunch of you today, so probably more of you than knew this morning when you came in, but Bonnie is going to be leaving us. She is moving away back to Ontario uh, to be with her family. And so, I thought it was really necessary for us to send her off with love. Bonnie has been a member of our congregation for many years, and every week she comes, she shows up, regardless of what's going on with her, with a smile on her face and an open heart, willing to be present with everyone who is here. And that is an amazing gift something all of us can aspire to. 
And so, I have a gift for you. I made this for you. And before the service, I passed it around to as many people as I could manage to find for them to all imbue it with their energy and their love and their hope for you as you go on to your new beginnings where you are going to be hopefully happier, healthier, and sound. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry too. <laughs> so this is a bind rune. I don't know if you know what those are, but this particular bind rune is for victory in battle, both mental and physical. So we want to send you off with all of our love and all of our good wishes and let you know that even though you might be far away, you will always be part of this community. Okay, now y'all can sing. <laughs>